I want to read one scripture found in the book of Psalms, chapter 92, verse number 12. Chapter 92, verse number 12. It simply says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You can see that. I want to title this this morning, I'm Still Standing. Yes. I'm still Standing. Palm trees, although we don't see very many around here, they can actually withstand a Category 5 hurricane if rooted correctly. They have the bend, don't break mentality, if you would. And cedar is also known as some of the strongest wood there is, and it's not prone to uh, warping or not uh, prone to sagging. And I'm hoping and praying that this sermon will be an encouragement to, to some of you that are experiencing some suffering and some setbacks and um, that you're going. I actually feel in my spirit that somebody already, somebody in here that's really just given into defeat. And I hope and pray that by the time this is through that you understand that you're not defeated. We all go through difficulties. We all go through things that, that we don't understand. And being a person of faith does not exempt us from trouble. We all have rain. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5 that it rains, the, the, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And Jesus, he told a very familiar parable where uh, a man, a wise man, who built his house on a rock, and it was a foolish man that built his house on the sand. We notice that the same storm came to both people, the wise, the foolish, are the just and the unjust. But Jesus went on to tell that the man whose house was built upon the rock was still standing. See, when you honor God and, 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 and you're faithful to God, the storms may come, but you have a promise, promise that many do not have. And that promise is, is when that storm passes by, you'll be able to say that I am still Stand. The enemy does not have the final say. Who does? God does. The enemy does not have the final say on your situation. God has the final say. You may get knocked down. How many has ever been knocked down? But you've never been knocked out because you're here today. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, when this is over, we're going to still be standing. We're going to still be standing. It rains on all of us. On every last one of us. But let me make a promise to you today. Not just from reading in his word, which is the truth. Not just from hearsay, but from experience today. That if you will stay in the faith, when the rain settles and the dust is clear, you'll be able to look back and realize that I am still standing. We can all look back on things that, that should have defeated us. Amen? We can all look back on things that should have defeated us. I can look back on uh, my lifestyle, my party lifestyle that I once had. It should have killed me. But for my mother's prayers, I'm still standing. Yes, amen. God pulled me out of a pit and he put a new song in my heart. That's why I'm still standing today. People of 25 years friendship have walked away from me. But that's okay because God said, Kenneth, they may walk away, but I will never leave you nor forsake you. Look back 
just for a moment and remember what God has done for you. Remember how God has opened the doors in the past. And if he's opened them in the past, I can promise you he will open them again for you. No matter what comes your way, when the storm is over, you'll be able to say, I'm still standing. You've got to understand that when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that you now have the DNA of our Almighty God on the inside of us. And you may get knocked down, but with the power and the DNA of God on the inside of us, we don't have to stay down. But it's time that when we fall, we rise right back up again. Micah tells us that when I fall, I shall arise. Understand today that you are a child of the Most High God. You've got the greatest power. You've got the greatest DNA that anybody could ever have on the inside of you. You've got that DNA that says, well, come hell or high water. When the storm is over, I can stand and say that I'm still standing. I'm still standing. You know, we, we've seen plenty of hurricanes around here. And they, 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 they bring havoc with, with their, their winds and other elements, but mostly their winds. And we all know that we've seen trees knocked down everywhere. Uh, they, they just could not withstand the winds of the hurricane. And even though they're not very popular around here, and we know that in the state of Florida they're, they're very popular, and that is the palm tree. Yeah. I remember when, I think it was in 2018 maybe, Hurricane Matthew went through uh, Florida around the panhandle, and it wreaked havoc. It tore places up, trees was ripped everywhere, buildings that... They didn't think it possibly be destroyed, was destroyed. But when you saw the footage of that, you look and numerous palm trees were still standing. Some of their branches had been blown off, but they were still standing. You see, that palm tree, it can bend during the storm. And, 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 and it can actually bend all the way to the ground yeah. and it can stay bent for about six hours or roughly six hours and, and, and it looks like it's over it's been bent for so long it looks like it's over but after the storm ends that palm tree bounces right back up yeah. <laughs> you can say that God put bounce back in the palm tree yeah. But it was just a matter of time before it stood back up. In our text, we read that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The reason God said that we would flourish like a palm tree is because he knew that we would face storms of many. He knew that we would face things that would bend us over. He knew that he would th we would face things that would almost bring us to an end. But do you understand that when God created you, he, bre he breathed a breath of life in you. And then when you were reborn again, when you were born again, when the Holy Ghost came on the inside of you, he filled you with that power. He filled you then with that bounce back, just like the palm tree has. We've got the bounce back on the inside of us. But we've got to learn that everything that we're going through right now is only for a season. It's only temporary. And the bounce back that's in you will cause you to be better off on the other side of the storm. Right. Your house is built upon the rock. You may be bent over a little bit right now, but it's not over. 
I said you might be bent over right now just a little bit, but it's not over. The winds may be raging, the storm may be raging, but it's not over, church. Uh, there's a bounce back still in you, and I promise you today that if you would get up in the middle of your storm and say, I'm going to praise him anyway, I'm going to magnify him anyway, you'll find that bounce back begin to rise up in you. You'll stand straight. You'll be able to look back at the devil and say, I told you so, devil. You brought all this against me. You tried to turn people against me, but I'm still standing. Don't have that defeated mentality this morning. As I've already said, it rains on everybody. But you've got something on the inside of you that says I'm still standing. I remember several years ago a young couple that I knew, they lost everything. And they were literally down to the, just the clothes on their back. And they were numb. Could you imagine? You know, I've had it bad off. I've never been down to that. So I, I just, they were numb. The man's job had closed down. It had actually had went bankrupt. And there was no job. But they kept going to church. They kept going to every service there was. And if, just a couple of years later, I remember getting pictures of a new home that they moved into. I remember hearing about a better home, a, a better job, and so on. You see, that's what happens when your house is built upon the rock. Not the same, but an increase. Not the same, but an increase. Isaiah said that when the enemy comes in like a flood. And you know what that means when he comes in like a flood? You know, how many has ever felt overwhelmed? How many is feeling overwhelmed right now? Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, right when we think we're completely overwhelmed, uh -huh. God said, I'm going to raise up a standard. Uh -huh. He's not going to raise up a doctrine. Uh -huh. He's not going to raise up some clothesline message. Uh -huh. He's going to raise up a barrier uh -huh. that says, well, you may rage and the weapon may be formed. Uh -huh. But I want you to know today that wherever you're at, the flood may the floodwaters might be raging. The storms may be blowing in your life. God is standing there and he's raising up that standard for you. There you in other words, you are so good to us, Trouble gets God's attention. Especially when trouble interferes with one of his children. It gets his attention. If you mess with God's children, you're messing with God. You got in trouble. It's got his attention. Uh, the most high God has our back. I heard something years ago, and you've heard me quote it many times. When all of hell is on your back, just remember all of heaven has your back. You're not alone in this valley. You're not alone in this trouble. God is still standing beside you. He is still walking beside you. And he's just waiting for that moment uh, that you realize Amen. that I've got bounce back. And I'm going to stand back up uh, just like the palm tree. Shake off that defeated yes, mentality. Amen. Shake it off today. Shake off those Amen. David suffered a major setback in 1 Samuel chapter 30. They were out protecting their property, their territory. But men came and they took their wives and they burned their homes. And, and they wept until they couldn't weep anymore. It looked like it was over. But David said, no, this is not the end of my story. This is not how it's going to be. David encouraged himself. He reminded him 
right. who he was uh -huh. and whose he, he was. was. Yeah. They said, we're going to go get back what belongs to us. They went back and they recovered it all. David's greatest defeat turned in to one of the greatest victories that yes. he ever had. Yeah. It's time we, while we're in the valley, while we're in a dark place, while we're in a storm, it's time that we rise up in that and we begin to encourage ourselves. No, devil, you've had my peace for too long. You've had my shelter for too long. You've had my calm for too long. So today, I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to go and take back what belongs to me. You've got the power on the inside of you to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. Everything. And even more. The enemy, he won't have the last laugh. No, you will. That's right. That's right. You will have the last laugh. Yeah. Build your house upon that rock. Yes. Build your build your life upon that rock. Build your work stuff or workplace on that rock. Build your lifestyle on that sure foundation. And you watch when that storm comes. Others may fall around you, but you will not fall. You may bend a little bit, but like a palm tree, when the wind stops raging, you're going to bounce back up. You'll be able to look around and say, I'm still standing. There's forces, that, that spirit, that power is on the inside of you. It's greater than anything that can come against you. Amen. One of my favorite verses is 1 John 4 and 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When, when in tough times, you, you can't sit around and just think about the trouble. Brother Stewart, that's hard. Oh, I know it's hard. But you can't dwell on that. That's right. Don't let it crush you. Come on. Have a warrior mentality. Yes, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Do what you got to do. Come on. If it's coming to church and you feel like the weight of the world, you feel like there's a cat five hurricane running through your life, you get to church. And if all you can do is squirm, squirm. If all you can do is wiggle, wiggle. But you got to push. And you got to push. And you got to push. And you got to push. You got to do what you have to do to beat this storm. God has armed you with victory. Amen. He has armed you with victory. He's got it right here for us. We are all warriors. And it's time that we as a church, it's time as we as individuals, we stand up and start acting like the warrior God has created us to be. You know, God might be saying push one more time. Come on. And watch what will happen. Yes, amen. When a woman is in labor, she's giving birth, and the doctor and the nurse, they'll, 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 they'll notice that it's almost there. And they'll, Come on, just give us one more push. Just give us one more push. And that soon-to-be mother or already mother, she'll give that one more push. Then all of a sudden, that miracle is birth. Yes. That's what God's saying to somebody today. Oh, you just give that one more push. Yes. You just give that. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, it's going to be painful. Oh, everything's raging. But if you would give that one more push, yes. you'll soon see the miracle that can be birthed from you.
like the palm tree, you're about to come back again. Would you look at your neighbor and say, you're like the palm tree. You're about to come back again. Oh, look at him and say, you're still standing. You're still standing. You're still here. You made it through those doors this morning. You made it to this church this morning. There's something on the inside of you. You just said, if I can get to church today, if I can get to church today, and if I can gather with his people, there's that bounce back that'll begin to raise up in me. And you can get up and square yourself to the devil. Devil, I'm still standing. chapter 4 verse 7 through 10 and 16 through 18 but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken. Amen. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Yes. Verse 16 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Out of all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Out of all the hurt that I've been through, I'm still standing. I may have been misunderstood, but I'm still standing. The devil has tried to knock me off of my feet numerous times, but I'm still standing. This sermon is an encouragement to you today for every one of you to know that these can be your words of victory when you leave here today. And face whatever you have to face this week. Yes. That at the end you can say, I'm still standing. Stand to your feet. Come on, church. Then, of course, the Watson, we are entering a time and a season 
know that although the battle has raged in our lives, we are still standing this morning. We were shaken, but we're still standing. We were beaten, but we're still standing. We've gone through some stuff that has shook us, but we are still standing. We've gone through some things that have shocked us, but we're still standing. We've gone through some stuff that surprised us, that has even scarred us, but we are still standing. Somebody right now needs to tell the devil, I'm still standing. I'm still worshiping. I'm still praying. I'm still shouting. I'm still dancing. I'm still going forward. It might be baby steps, but I'm going forward. I'm standing today. How many would get out of your seats right now and walk to this front and say, hey, devil, you've been around in my defeat. You've been around in my storm. You've been around in my valley. But today, you want you to stick around. I want you to understand that through it all, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing.